Hi everybody. I just wanted to come back on today and give you a few tips or techniques to um, just use with oil and cold wax. These are just things I've sort of picked up along the way and this is not a how to paint class. This is just some things that you might find handy. So um, the first thing I wanted to tell you about is what I've been doing to have practice surfaces. So I've been using the um, Arches Cold Wax and um, Cold, sorry, Arches Oil Paper. And this is a 12 by 16 pad and the sheets just come off. So I wouldn't paint it inside the pad. But the neat thing about this is that it doesn't need to be gesso. Nothing has to, nothing has to happen with it. Um, you can just start to work on it. So if you, da -da -da -da, if you work on, um, tape it onto a panel. So this is just an old election sign. I collect these at the end of um, at the end of elections. And by the way, people the best people to get election signs for are the people who have won. Okay, because they can't use the signs again. So if you um, steal somebody, borrow ask permission, whatever. If you ask permission to have their signs, but they didn't win, they need to use that in case they run again, okay? So I have one that says, Rachel Notley, that's who I voted for. Anyway, um, Rachel won, and so I called her up and said, her office, can I have some of the election signs? I'll go pick them up for you from our neighborhood. So she said, sure, because if she ran again, she would have to have new signs made that say re-elect, so she can't use these anymore and they end up in landfill. So if you tape with masking tape, you tape, this happens to be a bigger sheet. This is a 22 by 30, um, 300 pound uh, Arches watercolor paper that I gessoed. And then I just taped it with green tape. And then you can work on four all at one time. And then when you peel the tape off, you've got this nice white border. So that's really cute. Um, the 12 by 16, that's what I showed you yesterday, and I want to show you a neat way to be able to put your paper on without losing a taped edge. So when this is ready, I can just pop it into a 12 by 16 frame, or I can, what I tend to do, if I like it, is then I will glue it onto um, a regular um, panel. Actually, my husband makes these for me. It's just um, quarter, eighth inch ply um, plywood, and then he makes a cradle just out of some cheap wood because it's going to get painted anyway. So this way I have hardly any expense in the beginning. So if I play and it's a disaster, not much is lost. So, and the way I would glue that onto, onto that, dun -dun -dun, we have a one cooking here. So this is a painting I showed you yesterday again, and here's my panel. So I would just um, use uh, Miracle Muck or Heavy Gel, um, it doesn't really matter, and, and just glue that on there. Leave some, if there's some hanging out, that's great. You can trim that off later. And then you would just put the glue, whatever you're using, wood glue works too, on the back of your painting and on the surface of your panel and then you just lay it on where you want it and then you take a um, put if it's cold wax you want to take something like um, a piece of parchment paper so that you're not damaging your surface at all this is a dry painting so not much is going to happen but put a piece of parchment over and then take your brayer and a hard brayer works great for this start at the middle and just brayer out um, so that you get all of the air out and i work very carefully on making sure that none of those air bubbles are are in there and then um, then you just go ahead and frame it. I could just paint the sides of this and just put a wire on the back and it's ready to go. So that's kind of a really neat trick. Um, I'm all about I'm all about saving money <laughs> and uh, especially while I'm learning how to do something. So I don't go too really expensive. I have a bunch of wood cradles that I got 
in preparation for some new work now that I have a, a little bit of confidence. Um, but uh, they're still a little more expensive, so you know you don't want to have that fear going on with all else. But the other thing I want to show you, and this is from the Oil and Cold Wax course with Rebecca Crowell and Jerry McLaughlin. So I just have a 12 by 16 sheet painted, so like this, if it had enough paint on it. And all you do is you put, uh, okay, I gotta do this sort of hanging up in the air here. So if you take your paper, actually, let me see if I can bring you over here so that you can see. So if you take your masking tape and you take about, I don't know, six inch size piece and you put it on the back. Now, there's two sides on an Arches oil paper. One is smooth and one is a little bumpy. I like the bumpy surface, so I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just gonna put um, that sort of hinging on the back there. Where did I just drop my masking tape? Here it is. Um, and then on the other end, the same thing. So you put it on the back, okay? So this is like making a hinge, like we used to do when we used to frame, um, frame our watercolor paintings, okay? And you get your election sign out. Any piece of wood will work. It doesn't have to be an election sign. And then you lay it so that the tape is face, the sticky tape is facing up. Then you take another piece, longer piece, and you're just gonna go over the previous piece of tape right at the edge, right at the edge. So it covers over the sticky stuff here, like that. And you gotta uh, really burnish that down so it doesn't lift. So now I have my paper all ready to go. I can paint right to the edges and it's not, I don't, have, I don't have any masking edge to worry about. So when I'm finished with this painting, I have a 12 by 16, all ready to mount, all ready to cut up, all ready to throw in the garbage, whatever works. So I just thought that was kind of a really neat tip I wanted to share. Um, and this is the leftover tape that I pulled that other painting off of. And I found that it was curling a little bit. Um, if you can, see the painting, I'll just put it back on here. The sticky isn't so sticky anymore because I've already pulled it off. Um, but see how the edges sort of want to curl up a little bit? So I just stuck a little round of tape underneath um, and press that down so that I had a nice flat surface to work on. So you can do that too. All right, so that's what I wanted to tell you about surface. The next thing I want to tell you about... This is an old window. So can you see if you can see the whole thing? It's an old window, and it's just got aluminum on the outside here and glass on the inside. And what I did, if you come up closely here, um, you're getting the reflection of my ceiling. Nothing much I can do about that at the moment. Um, but there's two pieces of Gray Matters palette paper um, taped on the back of the window so that I have a gray, I have a gray surface, which is great for mixing colors, okay? But there's nothing on the glass surface. But what I wanted to show you are these cool little houses. Um, I'm gonna have to remember what they're called. Huh, I think they're called palette houses. Anyway, Druma Toll Perry told me about these. She doesn't use them anymore, but I got them out for my cold wax and I think they're really cool. I have, um, double-sided tape, a piece of shop towel inside here. And um, then on the double side piece of thing, I have some clove oil and I just um, dab a little bit of clove oil onto the felt. And clove oil seems to retard the um, drying time of oil paint. So these things come in small, in big ones, and in little ones. So in each set, you get one big one, and I think like six small ones. So I got two sets. So I have big pile of white here, and I have a big pile of uh, warm white, Gamblin's warm white, which I was using for my winter painting yesterday. And then I have little piles of colors that I've made, mixed colors, 
Um, and uh, there's a black made from orange and blue. I have some um, a different kind, a white with some alizarin orange mixed into it there. I have some black that I made from blue and orange. It's a different black. So when I start painting, I just take all of these off. But you can see this one's quite brown. This one's quite cool. Um, and then, let's see, what else do I have hiding under here? So there's my orange that I made, used with my ultramarine blue to make my black. And there's another dark. There's an alizarin crimson. And there's a transparent red oxide. So those are the colors that I used in this painting that I did yesterday. And um, so that was kind of cool. And I wanted to show you, I'm gonna turn you back around. Little houses, so they do get paint around the edges. There's a little silicon bead, like uh, this kind of a shape that fits over the edge of the plastic. You can just clean that off with, with solvent, okay? Um, but the little bit of uh, clove oil that you put in there keeps the paint nice and moist. And if the paint starts to get a bit tight, bit drying out, it's um, you can just add more cold wax medium because cold wax medium has solvent in it and it will just soften up the paint and then you're ready to go again. So you don't have to throw paint that's a little stiff. You don't have to throw it away. The other thing I wanted to show you is something that, so this is my, I use, I'm using Gamblin cold wax medium. I really like it. I, I use a lot of Gamblin products and I like the fact that it, um, it all goes together. Not that if you don't use Gamblin's, it doesn't. I also have, have some homemade stuff that um, I made and um, we'll be getting into that, but I just ordered and received a gallon uh, <clears throat> of cold wax medium from Delta Art in Edmonton, which was awesome because it's really hard to order from America now in Canada because the shipping is so long and the shipping charges and the customs and their dollar. Yeah, that's a problem too. Anyway, um, so I did order um, some brayers from Squeegee Press. These are their brayers. They're really soft. They're To me, they're very similar to Innovart brayers, which are a soft roller. But I have a couple of these, and I have a, my old uh, Speedball hard brayer, and they really work differently. Um, if you have a lot of paint on them, they'll still make the same texture. Um, but the soft one seems to be a bit more, will spread out a little more gently and the hard one, not so much, but the hard one's really great for if you're pressing, um, like a, I don't know, let's see, what do I have here? I have a piece off the bottom of my, um, roast chicken. So it had this on the bottom of the roast chicken thing to hold all the grease, I guess, away from the chicken. And it's a fabulous texture. So if I wanted to get this texture here on my painting, I just put this into wet paint and roll with a hard roller over top of that. So hard rollers are really good for that. Um, but I wanted to show you, if you mix 50-50 cold wax medium and your oil paint, um, that's a really nice ratio. But if you want it to dry a little bit faster, I add Galkid Light. Now this is a sample bottle of Galkid Light. I have a whole big bottle, um, but it has like a big pouring hole and it's really hard to figure out. You know, I just want a little bit and then you get way too much and then you're in trouble. So what I did is I took one of my old bottles from my Stevia Drops, cleaned it out and put my Galkid in here. So now I can control the number of drops that I put into, into the paint, which is much better. So that's working well. Um, this is another painting that I did. This was on a uh, 12 by 16 sheet of uh, Arches oil paper, which I had taped all the way around. So um, I just want to show you a few things that I did in there. Okay, so these are two. I'll try to hold this really still. So in this one, um, this was just at the beginning of my playing. Um, so basically I did I did this one that has the four, the four pieces. I did that first and played around on that. And then I did these that were bigger. So these are what, I don't know, 11 by nine, I guess. Um, so I was doing things like pressing bubble pack. So I press bubble pack into something and then it was coated with paint. So I pressed the, co the 
painty bubble pack on top. And I have this really neat, I stood on it yesterday, so I don't know how neat it's going to be anymore. But I have bubble wrap with really big bubbles. So I thought that was really cool because not many people have bubble wrap with big bubbles. I also have some square ones, which are cute, I haven't used yet. Anyway, so after I put it in the paint, it was all dirty. So I thought, well, what happens if I just lay it on there and then rub it over with my hard brayer? And then it transferred some of that paint on there, which was kind of cool. Um, and I did it again down here. Just a, I just pushed a few of the bubbles with my thumb there. Um, let's see what else is cool happening in here. So this, can you see this green here? This is just a little bit of pa pan pastel. Um, yeah, I wanted to show you this. So this is a pan pastel. So pan pastel is, um, they're, they're um, little pucks of very, very compressed pastel chalk pastel so you can do use regular pastel and just do the same thing if you so I just flicked the pastel here and then I put a parchment over and I brayered it and you can see it's it's um this one's quite dry but the pan pastel's in here it's not smearing as I'm touching it and rubbing it here little bits coming off on my finger but not much started these with um some um uh RNF pigment stick in in uh, alizarin orange, which is a gorgeous transparent color. So I put on the pigment stick and then I just brayered it so that the surface underneath was covered. So if you see underneath, hmm, so here, this is the orange under here is the orange of that transparent, um, transparent RNF pigment stick, okay? Um, and over here, um, that's actually on top, but you can see bits underneath. So it kind of is yellow when, when it's not too concentrated and gets more orange, like up here, that orange is just more concentrated oil, um, RNF oil stick. But when you scrape back through layers and it's best to scrape through these layers after you've let the paint set up maybe a day so it's not quite so wet and then take the, a skewer and, um, you know, just draw in with a skewer. You can use the other end of the skewer to get a fatter mark. I have a whole collection of things I'm trying to make marks with that, that are going to look different. So that's what's in there. Um, here's another place of scrape. And where it scrapes to the bottom, you can see the orange that was in the bottom, which is really cool. And here it is, too. Here you can see the orange. But up here when I scraped... There was a white layer on top of the orange in places, and it's coming to the white layer, so you're not seeing quite the same orange. So anyway, just these are just kind of experiments to see what would That's happen. That's all I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, let me know if you're interested in this. Um, I will, tr If you are, I will try to set up a better system so that you can watch me work, and um, then you can ask me questions. And that might be quite fun. So um, anyway, yeah, let me know if this is helpful. I hope you have a great day. Bye.